All right, it's time to get started. Hi, I'm Sarah. Welcome to another video. If you're coming back from a previous video, welcome back. And if you're new, here's what you should know about me. I'm Sarah. I'm a multi-genre author of romance, fantasy, and horror books. As an independent author, I'm responsible for all my publishing expenses. So in an effort to make better decisions and intentional decisions, I'm trying new ways to budget and save my money. I hope my experiences can help other authors and creative entrepreneurs figure out how to spend their business related money. This channel is typically dedicated to my horror and fantasy books, which I write under the pen name SR Marks. In the description below, you'll find the links to these books, all the products I'm using and items under my romance pen name, just Sarah Marks. What should you know before I get started? One, I'm trying something a little different this time and doing the audio live instead of re-recording, which means there'll probably be more stumbles. You should also know, especially those of you who are new, I'm a part-time indie author, which means all the expenses of publishing and promoting my books fall on my shoulders. I do have a full-time job that pays my bills, funds my savings, and takes care of my retirement. I am considering just the creative business as an author in these videos, but you can see from here, this is in fact a chunk of my setup for my personal budgeting too. So what am I doing today? Well, it is June and I have gotten all the money from my income streams as an author. That is Amazon, where people buy my books directly, Patreon for my romance books, where my most engaged supporters and fans support my books and they're reading the exclusive advanced access of book six in my 21st Century Austin series. And then there are events and other smaller income streams. And if you'd like to support me, the best way is buying books. That is it. <laughs> I do have other items, but most of it is for my readers. So I have money, I have my binder, I have my budget, and then I have some things for other videos that we'll talk about another day. This just sits on my dining room table because it's just me. I'm also gonna keep a few little details out just in case I need things. First, let's get out my money. I keep these in my little unicorn fund and I'm gonna separate it out before I actually count it because uh, there's all sorts of things just stuffed together in here. So let me show you the June budget. A lot of what I'm doing is planning ahead. Because I have a full-time job, a lot of that gets covered in a lot of the expenses of my book are already budgeted and put aside. So whatever I do this year is already spent and I'm really saving ahead for 2024. So this year, this month, I made, let me get out some pens. My $50 Amazon income was actually 40. I didn't know, I don't know if I sold less books. A lot of my romance books, which are what get a lot of sales, are in Kindle Unlimited, which means I get paid by how many pages people read. That number has gone down for a variety of reasons that I'll discuss in another video. But also sometimes the what I get paid per page read is not consistent. It's a variable based on how many people contribute to Kindle Unlimited's pot. Patreon, I anticipated 50, I got 50. And then events this year, this month, I got 50 and I made 109. This was actually lower and I set my estimation before I left the house. And we'll talk about that event because it was an event. I Lala is the independent bookstore. I do not get paid from them this month. That'll probably be next month. 
Etsy. I have just opened up my shop. I haven't ex taken out any of the money from it. Uh, it has stickers, book bundles. It will have some savings challenges that you'll start seeing in these videos that I'm creating for myself that maybe other authors will want. And then other, uh, this might be uh, somebody coming in to see me at an event that gives me a little extra money. This could be gift cards that people send me related to writing, whatever. Uh, right now, there's never anything there because I don't have any other like a uh, stream of income that is changing, especially for the fantasy and horror works. So what am I trying to save for? Well, I have $199. That's what I should have here in this stack of money. I'm going to make sure you can see the stack of money. Yes, you can. Um, the stack of money is should be $199. I'm putting aside money for my studio rent, which is $100 a month. The stock of the books, which I have not estimated after this weekend sale just yet, there are some pricing changes coming to Amazon that I need to do a lot of math on. And you'll be part of that experience for me because why not? For ads, I'm not spending or putting aside anything for advertising just yet. Uh, we'll have a whole video about events. And then the event fee, my fee for this event was paid ahead of time. And in fact, um, there is an other. There is $25 that I was given um, from the person I shared the table with at this past event. So there should be um, $124, uh, considering that, that, yes, 224. That's just the math off the top of my head. Arithmetic, still not a strength. Uh, writing, that's my strength. So what I put on my June budget is my income, my actual monthly expenses. What I'm doing here is trying to track what I'm actually doing to help me budget better in the future. And then I have these sinking funds. Covers is already saved. I believe I talked about that in an earlier video. What I'm saving for primarily now are my editors, which is about $2,000 a year. My annual expenses, which are about um, 914. That is Cedric. He is my roommate, co-worker, co-writer, uh, child, and pet. And he has lots of feelings. And the window is open, so he's hearing everything. I've taken out taxes because I put that in my main budget. Right now, I don't make enough out of my book sales to actually pay taxes on it. I hope that will change someday. But my accountant, who does my taxes, comes out of my normal budgeting tech i have a goal of 800 that's for a couple little things like doing this on a camera that's better than my cell phone and maybe a remarkable two and i might have to get a new tablet that i write on uh i want to have these things ready to be spent when i need them national novel writing month is a 500 dollars goal right now there's technically nothing in there but that's another video for another thing We'll talk about what that is. That is not a fee that I have to pay to participate in the program. That is the money I put aside for me to have a comfort as I experience the program. Uh, the rent, which is my studio space. I have a desk and a shared studio where I can go when I wanna write. Some of these videos might end up getting filmed there someday. I don't know. Right now I'm in my dining room playing with a dog, but that is $1,200 a year stock. Uh, right now there's $20 in there to pay for what I sell at events. I have to replenish the, the stock, so I pay Amazon a certain amount. And I believe there's another video already talking about that, or there might be soon. Audiobooks, there's a whole video talking about that. I'm trying to put aside $1,500, but that's a savings challenge that's a little different. So nothing is going to get stuffed. And then events, there's $100, and my goal is $750. I typically schedule events ahead of time. I do not pay within the month. And I try my best to share my spot with someone else to sh so that we can split the cost. And that is the other 25 here at the event I was at. And then finally there is ads. I have no goal with this right now. Ads are complicated. I am not great at them. So this is what I am trying to build towards. This is what I currently have, what I'm going to be adding and what the total will be. And I might not fill this out with you right now, but that's what's there. Uh, June expenses, I will be updating. What did I tell you about this month's event? Because it was an event. And then the, you'll probably have seen some of this content already. 
I do have some goals for June. I'm trying to increase my subscription count. So if you're watching this and you're not subscribed, help me get to 200. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm currently at 15. I'm not even trying to monetize right now. Uh, Patreon support, I'm trying to get up to 75. This is if you're a romance reader and you like my other books. I would not just participate in a Patreon. I would get my other romance books. Amazon sales, I'm trying to grow this, but um, it's tough, it's variable. And Amazon is not the best supporter of writers. Etsy sale, I'm trying to get to $30 a month. Uh, but again, right now, this might not be something you, a viewer of a random YouTube channel are interested in. And then my webpage sales for my books, I am trying to shift my income from being so very based on Amazon to being based on my own channels that I have more control over. And you'll have noticed when we look at my income, Amazon, which anybody can buy from any time of day, ebook, paperback, only makes about $40, but I make almost tw over twice as much at an event. It would logically seem that events are a better way for me to get books sold, but I am one person and I would rather be writing than selling because I love writing. That's why I'm here. So that is our recap of the goal for, for June. Things that happened in May are not that interesting. I've talked about them in other videos. I'm really busy getting this better organized. So I'm gonna keep this off to the side just so that I can see it and let's count the money. So I should have 100 and 224, 20, 40, 60, 80, 1, 20, 40. 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 2, 10, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 224. That was some good math on my part. So let's put this off to the side. This is my publishing journal for now. Uh, I am already growing out of it. This is struggling to close and these aren't even that full. And it's just because I keep adding the envelopes I find. And then this is my newest little edition. I don't know if you can see it, but it's my keychain for release the word Kraken. My friend Christy designed this for me years ago to use for a so now, national novel writing month, local events, but it didn't really take, but I love her and we wanted to continue to feature her. So she let me make some stickers and I've made this keychain to go with it. It's a nice little charm for my planner. And I do have more. And if you want to release the word crack in yourself, let me know in the comments below. All right, so before we get into this, what happened at this past event in June? While I sold $109 worth of books, this is actually lower than I've been selling at other events. That is because the event this week was rainy and cold and it's June. So it was weird. When I realized what the forecast was showing for this event, I emailed the organizers and was basically told, well, you do have a tent with a canopy, right? Which I do. I have a nice tent. I have a canopy on it. I have weights to keep it down. But the thing is, books are paper and paper doesn't like the rain. Also, people don't like to go to outdoor events when it is cold and rainy. This is why winter events tend to be inside. So not only did not a lot of people come, but not a lot of fun was had. I ended up spending more money, uh, well, not more money than I made, but more money than I anticipated. One of my favorite vendors who was a popcorn maker was there and I already had money in my personal budget to buy two bags of popcorn. They were delicious, Oreo flavored and watermelon flavored. But I also was so chilly, I needed to buy a blanket from the vendor across from us who makes no so fleece blankets. And it's a really cute Halloween one that I'm gonna love to use in the fall and might have to use today because it is still chilly out and it is June. 
but that was about $30 that I ended up spending in an event when I only in intended to spend about 15 on the popcorn. So that did cut into my personal spending for the week, which I'll deal with. It's not a big deal. I tend to have a lot of overage for my personal spending at this point anyway, but the event was not fun and we felt ignored. And I'll say this, if you organize craft fairs or you're thinking of participating in craft fairs as a vendor with your products, make sure that you check in with people for if you're organizing them. Make sure you know what's going on for your vendors, especially if you have an indoor and outdoor setup and have a rain plan. If you are a vendor, have your own rain plan. We did have somewhat of a rain plan. We ha I have sides to my tent, but I could only find one. It did keep a lot of damage from happening to our books, but we ended up leaving early, as did most of the vendors. I was quite surprised to see the number of vendors who did not have weights for their tents. So when gusts of wind came through, their tents literally blew away. And a lot of their product was destroyed because it got on wet ground. And these are often soft, comfy things like blankets and pillows and fabric and yarn. So it is tough. So remember weights if you're going to be a craft vendor. Bring weights for your tent, 25 at least on each leg, if not more. And make friends with your other vendors. Just, just be nice to them. They're suffering too. So I did make less than I typically make at an event but I still did better than I expected to do. I was only expecting to make back what I spent on the tent, which was $25. So making $75 more on top of that was a really nice, unexpected pleasure. Uh, and if I get a cold, it's because I have spent a day out in the rain and cold to sell books to people. And I did meet a lot of really nice people who I look forward to hearing from as they get more into my books. All right, so I'm going to show you the covers folder again. This is actually already funded $300 for my book covers. So I don't need to contribute anything to that one, which means I need to think about where I wanna go and focus next. And for me, and because I am budgeting ahead of time, there is a sense that I should uh, sort of do the snowball effect where I reverse snowball, I guess. Uh, I build up one fund over others as I go. So my f next thought is to focus on annual expenses. These are things uh, like Canva, which I use to make graphics, Book Funnel, which I use to house my eBooks and audiobooks if I'm going to sell them independently or share them as newsletter freebies. It includes so many little things. I actually have a tracker in here that tells me what it is. So Canva, Book Funnel, Grammarly helps me with proofreading. Book Sprout allows me to run advanced reader campaigns to get more reviews. Book Brush is another graphics tool. I don't know if I'll keep it. And my web pages. And one of my web pages uses Wix, which will offer you 50% off the first year and then hike you up significantly more after that. So I need to consider who's hosting my web pages and how much that costs. But that is future Sarah's problem, not today, Sarah. So uh, I just paid the Canva bill last month, which I know the current pricing. So I put it here so I will remember for next year. So I know I already have in this one about 120. Let's count to make sure. And I have some fake money in here that I've already put aside uh, to make change for something else uh, and then a 20. So I want to add another 100 here so that this is fully uh, up. So that's 100. I want to make sure that I can get to this one uh, and have this ready to go so that I can really assess where next year's spending is going to be. And this is a $914 increase. So I've added a hundred. This is now 220. So it makes it a little easier. And I will fill out the trackers after. And I've actually run out of these little six ring binder trackers. I only have the unhole punched one. 
and I can't punch the holes because there's no, there's no room. You have to give room. Editors, I am saving for my editors $2,000. I currently have 120. No, I have 80 and I'm going to add 40 so that I get to 120. That now I have 120. I did think about that one ahead of time. I tend to publish two books a year. I do a line edit for some, uh, for all, but sometimes I do a developmental edit and all my books have proofreaders and copy editors. So it is somewhat expensive. So I do budget about 2000 because it is variable depending on the length of the book. The longer the book, the higher the expense. All right, advertising. I do have something in ads. Uh, it turns out when I was counting to get ready for today, I do have $40. Um, and I'm going to add another 40. So ads are not just Amazon, but it's pretty much Amazon and Facebook for me right now, but it could also include buying into giveaways and uh, book exchanges that will get more readers. Hold on, let me take a sip of tea. I'm drinking a green tea that was once a promotion for Modern Persuasion, my first book. I, it, the book revolves around a lot of things, but it includes tea and I like tea. I have three bags of the tea left, so I'm just gonna drink them when I do these videos, but it does help the throat. So advertising, uh, when you do Facebook and Amazon, you pay per click and you can set a limit on how much you can spend a day. And my, the person who taught me about ads said to set it at about $5 a day. It's a very conservative, low estimate of what you might spend, but for $5 a day at 30 days a month, you have about 150. So I need to get that to 150 per month before I do anything. But right now we have, I said 40. Yeah. Which means I have, uh, now I'm just gonna recount again because talking to you all does make me forget things. So 20, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 80. Uh, rent we're going to hold off on for now. Events has to get 25 because that is what I need to swap out two fives for a 10. I do have a way to do that. Or one five for a 10. No, nope, I got two. Because I only paid for half a $50 table, my friend gave me uh, 25 back, but I put that in to the events for next time. So 20, 40, 60, 80, 1, 20, 10, 20, 30, 45. So 145. Hmm, I must've stuck something in there. Oh, I know what I did. I put in another 20. Originally, there were going to be three of us at the table and um, that would have changed how much we each paid for the spot. I'm kind of glad we didn't have three people at the table given how cold and wet it was. It would have been a lot harder for us to um, to protect the books if there had been a third person. Uh, as it was, we were allowed, we were able to put our two tables closer into the center of the uh, tent space so that people weren't going to get completely water damaged books. But some of them got warts. It was not, it, there was humidity to go with the cold and the wet. As one typically finds with cold wet days, there's humidity. Stock, I am going to put aside the rest. I haven't estimated what I'm going to need for stock yet, but I'm going to need 
about this much. So we have 10, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. I did not sell too many books, about 10, which um, averages out in a way. And then I have already stuck another 20 in here that I had from, from anticipated pricing changes. What is in here is a cash, cash voucher from for Amazon for $48.50. This will be used to buy stock. What I when I collect enough change, and I think you've seen my piggy banks in other challenges, I take it to the Coinstar Center and I get Amazon gift cards to use specifically for book stock, since that's who I order from. So we do have the 48. But in cash, I have 20, 35, 6, 7, 8, 9. I don't have a goal for this. I do just keep track of what I need to spend and then do that. Other things I have in here is showing love. This is two fellow authors. If I want to support them on Patreon, do a Kickstarter or simply buy books from them because I'm curious. I have a lot of little book mentors, most of whom don't know they're my book mentors, some of whom do. And I enjoy supporting my fellow indie authors primarily to see what they do and how they promote themselves, but also to make sure that they can have a sustainable writing life. After that, I have my tech fund. Office Supplies is a relatively new one and it does have a little in here and it's not on the budget list yet. Uh, this is still has about 20. This is for things like um, pens, paper, things that I keep around the office. I have a sticky note obsession, but I will eventually need to restock once I use up what I have. You can see here's a sticky note. What else do I have? I have tabs for planners. I have markers. I have pens. I have... I have a lot and I need to get this under control. So I have a envelope here for office supplies and one in my personal binder. <laughs> Professional development, I do periodically do classes on different topics. My favorite is the Better Faster Academy, which works with writers to use your strengths to write better and faster. Samples are things that I might need to buy to see the quality of the product. For example, these little keychains for release the word Kraken were considered samples because I was seeing if the product was any good. And Sticker Mule, who does those, gives you a deal. So many, I think it was 19 for like 20 bucks, which is an exceptionally good deal, but I needed to start putting money aside for those. Postage, uh, opening a little Etsy store means I'm responsible for getting things to people and thus I need to put postage aside. Patreon rewards, because I have a Patreon, I give things away periodically, and some groups get physical items, so I wanna make sure that I have money put aside to pay for those. It's typically copies of books, but there are other things. Giveaways, like any good content creator and writer, I try to entice my readers, and every so often those are physical items that need to be um, paid for. And then change. I believe I owe myself a little money uh, from making change at the event. Uh, if you've seen other videos, you know this, but if you're new, this is the change that I keep in my, my supply so that when I go to events and someone wants to pay with cash, I can do it. And I think I got three of the 20s I got needed to have six chain, six dollars and change. So there's an $18 difference uh, from what I should have. And I think I owe myself 16 still. I did slip some money in here. So I have 30 and 10s, which are still here. Uh, I might get rid of the 10s and just beef up the fives and the ones given the way I price things. But I should have $40. So I have five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 35. So I'm missing five. So I will make a note to myself. We'll open my pencil and make a note to myself. And then I should have 20 in singles. And I have 19. 
and I should have 20. So, what I had to do is find $6 from my stash, and it's really easy to use uh, my spare money, but at this point, I think I don't have, uh, I have the single, but I don't have the five. So, I'll put the single here, we'll cross that off, and when I find another five, I will replace. And then the next time I go to an event, which will probably be in August if I can find one. Um, I'm not sure, it might not be till September. July is not a month I feel like I'm going to be able to do an event. Uh, I have some fun adventures coming up. Uh, one is writing a book, because it's another National Novel Writing Month event. And the other is going, <gasps> oh. Cedric doesn't want me to share that one yet because it's not, it's not I'm not sharing it. It's not confirmed. So uh, there's that fun adventure and I don't want to overload myself. So that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments, but be kind because people have this knack for being douchey on the internet. So be kind, but I might not respond to your douchebags and I will see you in my next video which is maybe a video about something related to writing and how I budget or my savings video. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this, subscribe to my channel and ring the bell so YouTube will notify you eventually when I post another one. Have a great day.